Hi guys, Josh here from Mobile Tech Videos. Today with the first ever uh, weekly ROM review brought to you by MobileTechVideos.com. This is a segment that we plan on uh, running once a week to review all the top ROMs uh, in the Android community. Right now focusing on the Samsung Captivate. Uh, today we've got perception based ROMs. We're running 9.5 on the left and 10 on the right using the latest build from DG. Uh, let's go ahead and fire these things up. Okay, there is our head-to-head. -head. Uh, we're not really going to race to the beginning on this because who cares how fast it really gets there. Boot speed is important, but it's literally a matter of seconds on these two. We can see we've got this cool Firebird kernel uh, on the right. We're running a different kernel on the right versus what we were running on the left. We were using COG kernel uh, 6, I believe, on the left. Uh, so we, we boot into the same screen here. Uh, we've got the Perception uh, teardrop uh, water type on a marble floor type screen. Um, so the Firebird boot uh, screen is pretty cool in my opinion. Um, some people don't like it, so, you know, whatever. It's only on there for a second. First thing we're going to notice is the lock screen of default lock screen is Android on this side, where it's the Samsung pane glass on this side. Um, I'm going to get to a really cool feature involving unlock screens in a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and unlock each phone. These phones are fresh out of the box with nothing more than four applications installed. Those four apps are Linpack, Nenomark, Neocore, and Quadrant Standard to give you a baseline on that, as well as Advanced Task Killer, which we just ran. So our base memory right out of the box is 194 on this side, 184 on this side. So we got a little more available RAM on this side. Um, one thing we're going to notice right away is we've got our updated launcher on this side. We've got the 5 dock launcher. Supports landscape mode. Um, that's a big favorite for me. Uh, unless you don't run these, then it really doesn't matter. This doesn't support landscape, and I've never been a fan of the three dock bottom like that. But either way, another big change to the launcher is if we go into each, we'll see we've got vertical based 3D scrolling for this one, whereas we've got horizontal based scrolling for this one. So I've always been a fan of the horizontal based scrolling. Um, I feel like you get to see more icons on a single page, um, and I've always liked it a lot more. If we go into the About phone on each one, we can review some of these changes. On 9.5, we were running the Perception Build 9 for the build. Um, kernel version was 2.6.32.9, Caw Kernel 6 by DG, uh, version number 10. We were running the JL3 modem 2.2 firmware version. And for the model number, we had a T959D, uh, which obviously is not this phone, but it's a ripped ROM, so that's what you get. And on Perception 10, we had Perception build number 10 with a 2.6.32.9 Firebird number 32 kernel, also running the JL3 modem with 2.2.1 firmware, which is a big change. And we've got the updated model number to I897, which is cool. Uh, one other thing I wanted to note, we'll go ahead and get to the lock screen thing here. This is the static default lock screen. If you want another one, you're going to have to add it. Or you're going to have to download an application to overlay, which overlays are never as good as the real deal. Check this out. If we go into settings and display, we get this absolutely incredible unlock screen option where we can pick whatever lock screen we want. Currently we're on Android. We've got Samsung Puzzle Lock and Epic Unlock. So... If we wanted to switch, boom, it's that easy. Now we've got the pane glass, now we've got the puzzle unlock, and now we've got the epic unlock. So, I mean, if that's not awesome, then, I mean, you know, you make your own calls, but that's that's a great feature. Uh, devs, that's that's an awesome feature. You know, if you can incorporate that type of stuff, hey, more power to you, because that, that's awesome, because no one really cares for... A few people care for it, but not many. Look how far you have to keep going, keep going, keep going, all the way to the top. And unless you have pretty big hands, sometimes that kind of swipe is very annoying. So, anyways, let's move on. Uh, both ROMs support boot animation.zip support, meaning you can add your own custom boot animation to the beginning. Uh, the build source for Perception 10 is JPY based build. Um, the kernel is built on JPX uh, build technology. Uh, in addition to this, I've also found that Perception 10 brings back a really handy feature for me, and that's when you go into settings, wireless network, and mobile networks, you get this really nice network mode option to switch from 2G to 3G. That's especially handy for AT&T customers or anyone on a GSM slash 3G network. Um, 
people that are using Edge and 3G. If you're in an area where you know 3G sucks but you're still connected to a 3G tower, it's very, very nice to know that we can switch uh, back to an Edge tower that we know is more stable in that area. So that's always a big plus, and it allows us to use extended controls and togglers that are going to move it over. So, I mean, that's, that's a big plus there. Uh, obviously, if we want to do power-offs, we still have these same type of options on each phone. We get the same typical options here. So there's nothing new there. That's just typical with uh, DG ROMs and a lot of other ROMs. Um, in addition to this, uh, the haptic feedback is disabled by default. The animations are enabled by default. So you're going to get the flashy from the left, from the right, it appears out of nowhere type of animations. Uh, so that's cool on both. Um, as things have boiled down here, we're at 187 on this phone and 170 on this phone. So each is going to dwindle down a little bit. I've always seen a little more out of 9.5, but it's hardly noticeable, so it doesn't really bother me. Um, another thing to consider is we are running Blinky out of the box for our backlight notification system on this phone, whereas we're running the BLN control free on this phone. So if you're a big fan of either, you may want to consider that type of change. A few bucks to mention are the home button haptic does not work, not a big deal. Buttons don't light up when you touch the screen like they would on a Captivate ROM. Uh, the ringer notification are not tied together, and what I mean by that is if you turn down the ringer on the home screen, it's not going to adjust the notification along with it. We would like to see that from the Captivate community, but I know it may be more complicated than just requesting it, so if you guys can get that to work, that'd be outstanding. And uh, other than that, we there's not a whole lot of bucks to either one. I personally have noticed that when talking in a heavy uh, heavy background uh, uh, noise area, such as like a car with a muffler on it, or maybe just anywhere where there's a lot of people, you'll get a lot of static on the opposing end. So what I mean by that is everything will sound great on your end, but the person you're talking to will have a very hard time understanding what you're saying. I don't know if that's just me, but it's happened on every single i9000 ROM I've ever tried. So I've always been a little disappointed in that, never been able to keep... Uh, the i9000 ROMs for too, too long because of that. But um, other than that, the speakerphone is great. You can be in a loud volume area with the speakerphone, no problem. So it's something to do with the native mic at the bottom. I don't know. If anyone else has noticed it, go ahead and post up about your experiences. But that's just my experience. Um, one thing uh, that we also have changed is if we go into the messaging client, we can see that the swipe is completely different for 10. We've got the newest swipe here. We've got the big bold letters, big bold buttons. And one thing that's absolutely awesome that may, may, may have me looking back at swipe is the uh, microphone button. So we've got the microphone button right there. So that's, that's a great feature for me. We've got the plain buttons and plain text with no microphone on Perception 9.5. So that's a, it's a real handy feature uh, if you're a big swipe user. You now have the microphone button. Uh, let's go ahead and kill once again. And uh, we'll open our folder, and let's go ahead and add NeoCore to this group. And we're going to run our Lin packs. we got 9.5 on the left, 10 on the right, 1, 2, 3. Okay, those are running side by side. Now remember, these are just for people that are score dependent. These really don't mean too much. we got 14.2 on each phone. It's pretty impressive for stock kernels, not overclocked. And we got a 14.1 and a 14.1, so they're pretty much side by side. I have seen the 10 beat 9.5 quite a few times, so that was that test. Uh, let's do one more kill of Advanced Task Killer, and we'll run a Ninamark. So I'll flip these to the side. And that should be both. Got that one a little behind on the left on a late click. Uh, this is a fairly lengthy test. I just wanted to include it for you score-dependent fanatics because I know that's such a popular question. In all seriousness, though, uh, you should really focus on real-world user experience, not these scores. Who cares what a score says if the real-world experience seems better in person? So that's just my opinion, and a lot of the developers will tell you the same thing because um, a lot of the developers are coming up with these ROMs and People ask more about how fast is it, you know, what are the scores versus how fast does it feel versus what are the features that have changed. So my advice, quit 
quit caring so much about scores. So we got 50.3 and 50.2, practically the same thing. That score is going to change by a hair each time you run it, so no clear winner there. Uh, if we do a quadrant, we'll see in the system info that both phones are maxed at a gig. Pull that down a little bit. Okay, both phones are maxed at one gig on the CPU. I'm going to include a treat for you guys uh, with the kernel from Glitter Balls. So we're going to do a full benchmark. Actually, no, we're not. And the reason for that, and I wanted to point this out, is Quadrant currently does not work on this side. Uh, I just remembered that. Quadrant does not work on this side of things. So we're not going to be running a Quadrant score today. Uh, it worked on the early versions of Perception 10. It does not work on the latest version, or at least my phone does not work with the latest Quadrant and the latest Perception build. Maybe something for DG to look at, but like I said, it scores, you know, who really cares? I'd compare it in real life if I were you. And so now we're going to do a Neo score, I mean a Neo core. And we'll run both of these. Another lengthy test. I'm trying to get this into the. 15 minute time range that I have for YouTube because I really don't want to have a part 2 on a ROM review. So I'll move these up a little bit. <clears throat> these are cool testers if you really care about scores and you're really curious about seeing the applications work. These are really cool tests to run. Uh, the four apps are Quadrant, uh, Neo Core, Nenomark, and Linpack. You can search those in the Android, they're all free. And they all give you kind of a basis on how fast you're moving. So if you overclock, you know, you can kind of see your score advantage. Uh, keep in mind that this is processing based only. Uh, Quadrant will do a uh, read-write I.O., which is useful for lag fix. But a lot of your general speed comes from lag fix. So this time we actually won by just a hair on the Perception 10 build. So like I said, it's going to go back and forth. But that was 55.6 on this side, 55.7 on this side. So... I've got a treat for you guys. I'm going to go ahead and flash the Glitter Balls kernel, come back and show you a Lin pack and a couple scores from it. So I'll be right back in just a flash. Okay, guys, we are back after our flash of Glitter Balls. We will go ahead and unlock and go into the About section and just show you what you can expect to see after a good flash. We've got the Iswald at Beer Machine number 7, 2.6.3, 2.9 build. That indicates we've got Glitter Balls um, as our new kernel. You can see about the same RAM available, memory available there. I'm going to run one more Lin pack. I'm going to run the benchmark. So I'll set that down. And this thing really does fly if you choose to overclock. Note that stability could go down. 16.5. Uh, so compare that to 14.2. We're not going to run it twice due to time limitations. Uh, we're about to get a force close. I can fill it. Um, so we got a force close on Quadrant. Uh, it does allow us to run through Quadrant. Uh, so apparently that bug is in the kernel. Uh, take a note of that. Um, and the bug, that could be on my phone only. Who knows? So anyways, we're going to set that back down. Allow Quadrant to complete. So I can show you that score for you Quadrant fans. And uh, that way you can rank this up against whatever you want. Um... Glitter Balls kernel is actually very stable. Um, I actually chose to run that day to day, and I've had no issues with it. Uh, the bugs are the same for both kernels, so make a note of that. One thing I did want to note and say thank you for uh, to all the developers that worked on this particular ROM and whoever is directly responsible for TuneCo being native, thank you very much. Uh, there is Tune support native in uh, the original kernel. Uh, I'm not sure if it's available in the Glitter Balls kernel, but in the Firebird kernel, Toon support is native, meaning that Toonco and IPsec VPN will work. See my video for that, and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. You don't have to load your own Toon module, so if that means nothing to you, then don't worry about it. But if you use IPsec VPN, that means a lot. We've got a 1798, so it's a score of about 1800. Uh, that's outstanding. Uh, of course, it tops all the other devices on that particular list. Uh, so 1800 for quadrant score and over 16, I think 16.5 for the Linpack. Absolutely awesome. So to all the developers that worked on this, I appreciate it. We appreciate it from the XDA community. 
Look for my weekly ROM reviews in the future. Check out the Mobile Tech Videos YouTube channel as well as mobiletechvideos.com. And as always, good luck.